Welcome to worship, everyone, uh, and welcome to our brothers and sisters who are joining us on Facebook or later on this week um, with the video. So it is always a, uh, a blessing, an honor to be here with you to worship and to give thanks. So let us begin with our call to worship, please. Jesus calls us into his house of worship. We come with open ears, minds, and hearts. We welcome and accept all who gather here. More importantly, all who are here gathered. We'll uh, gather with our gathering song number 697 in the Blue Book. Thank you. 
and with our hearts as dark as night, we are ready to confess. Merciful God, Jesus shows us all the ways that we fall short. He also provides a way out of the holes we dig ourselves into. Forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices, be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus we pray. Amen. Jesus does indeed forgive. Jesus cleanses us of our sin and recreates us in God's image. Receive the entire forgiveness of all our sin. Go and walk free of guilt, shame, and sin. You are made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of unity, Jesus broke down barriers wherever he went. Teach us to treat people like they matter, because they do. Will you um, please join in the song of praise if the words are on your insert as the deer. say to me continually, Where is your God? Please stand as you are able, and we will sing our gospel affirmation in the water of God.
But Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, well, surely no one has brought him something to eat. And Jesus said to them, my food is not, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to complete his work. Do you not say four months more and then comes the harvest? But I tell you, look around and see how the fields are ripe for harvest. The reaper is already receiving wages and is gathering, his, gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that city believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me everything I have ever done. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, it is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is truly the Savior of the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I invite the children who are here to come forward, and we're just right here, okay? candy. Do you know why I have candy? Well, so yeah, so you can eat it. Exactly. But I have candy today because Mr. Falcon went and got some for us. Thank you, Mr. Falcon. I haven't had any yet. I have a story for you. Do you know who Winnie the Pooh is? Yeah, me too. I really like the stories of Winnie the Pooh. I have one for you that I thought I would share today. So it turns out that all of Winnie the Pooh's friends and he and Christopher Robin were in Hundred Acre Woods and they decided they wanted to go on an adventure. So they wanted to go find the North Pole. Okay? So they took off and they had everybody with them and they had Pooh and Piglet and Eeyore and Roo and Kanga and Christopher Robin. Did I miss anybody? And Tigger. Well, they had to have Tigger. Thank you. Anybody else? I think that's everybody. Well, they were walking along the spring or the river and going over the bridge, and Rue falls in. Rue falls into the water, and he needs to be rescued. So Pooh takes this long stick that he has, and he puts it into the water, and he says, Rue, hang on to it. And Rue does, and and Pooh takes Roo out of the river. And he's safe. And everybody is very happy, especially Kanga. And they all thank they all thank Pooh very much. And then Christopher Robin says, Where did you get that long stick? And Pooh says, Oh, this pole? I found it. And I thought, well, maybe it'll come in handy. So I brought it along. And Christopher Robin said, Oh, our adventure is over, everybody, because who found the North Pole? <laughs> and Christopher Robin put the pole in the, in the ground, and he put a flag on it, and it said, this is the North Pole. Who found it? So now they all know where the North Pole is. Is that really the North Pole? No. Wasn't that a fun story, though? Because everybody thought, well, who found the North Pole, and now everything is good. But it really wasn't the North Pole, was it? No. But it was for them. <coughs> they believed that that was the North Pole. So here to how, here's how this story goes with this, that long story that I told you about Jesus and the woman at the well. Sometime they were arguing. The woman said, we, we worship here, and you worship there, and which one of us is right? 
And Jesus said it would be better if we understood that some of the time is coming where we will worship wherever we are. And that will be the right way. It's kind of like Blue's story. The woman said, well, this is our worship place. Just like everybody in Christopher Robin's world thought this was the North Pole. And this is the worship place. Somebody else thought that place was the place to worship. And Jesus said, the place to worship is where you are. You will worship the Father wherever you are, either at this pole or at this pole, either at this place or at this place. You will worship wherever you are because you have Jesus now in your heart. And that's what, she, that's what he was trying to tell the woman. Sometimes it's really hard for us to remember that, you know, there's big, this place, worshiping Jesus is bigger than just this place. Worshiping Jesus is when you're at school or at home, when you're out snowmobiling or sledding or any of that stuff. You worship because you're doing it with all your heart and knowing that Jesus is in your heart. And that way you can show everybody else what Jesus is like, by what you do, and what you say, and how you act. Let's say a prayer. Dear Jesus, thank you for being in our heart and for reminding us that no matter where we are or what we're doing, you are here with us, guiding us and showing us the path that you want us to take and the words that you want us to say. We give you thanks for this, Jesus. And all God's children said, Amen. Awesome. Thank you very much. Okay, now we have Andy, but we also have these guys. You start this. You go down the line. You start this. You go down. And when you have both things, you can go sit down. Thank you for helping me. passage, these 42, can you hear me okay? Okay, good. Um, this passage that we're, this, this story, these 42 verses that is so long and has so much fun stuff in it. What we're going to focus on today is all of the violations that Jesus made. According to, thank you very much, according to the, thank you, According to the social, the culture at the time, and the rules and the laws at the time, Jesus made a bunch of violations. And if you were the police at the time, you would have, you would have to have a pretty big book to cover all of the violations that Jesus made. So let's start. First, he went through Samaria. He was in Jerusalem. He had just gotten done talking to the, um, what's his name? Uh, Who's the guy who came in the dark that we talked about last week? <coughs> oh, Andy, I can't stand it when I forget names. What's that? Yeah. Nicodemus, thank you. Thanks, Andy. Nicodemus, he had just gotten done talking to Nicodemus in the middle of the night because <coughs> Nicodemus didn't want anybody to know that he was talking to Jesus and he was very confused. And so there's trouble brewing because there's always trouble brewing, right? And so Jesus decides he needs to leave Jerusalem and go back to the region of Galilee. But to do that, he, it says he had to go through Samaria. Well, I'm not real great at directions, but Jerusalem is in the south, and Galilee is in the north, and Samaria is right in the middle. So, yeah, I mean, if ge geographically, if you were going to take the fastest route from Jerusalem to Galilee, you had to go through Samaria. But Jews don't go through Samaria because they might run into a Samaritan, which is logical. And they didn't want to run into a Samaritan because they had no time for them. They had no time. They did not want to talk to them. They did not. They were, if they did talk to them, if they ran into them and saw one of them, they were unclean. And they would have to go back to Jerusalem and go through all of the cleansing rituals because they had seen a Samaritan. 
That is not logical. One of my favorite things to say. So instead, when Jews went from Jerusalem to Galilee, they went east across the River Jordan and then north and then west across the Jordan River so they could be in Galilee and bypass Samaria. All because they thought that the Samaritans were wrong. How they worshipped, how they married, how they acted, all of it was wrong. So they took this long route over the mountains twice just to avoid a group of people. Jesus had to go through Samaria. Well, he didn't. Geographically, he didn't. There were other ways to get to, to Galilee. And if he was going to uh, obey the rules of the day, he would not go through Samaria. So it has nothing to do with geography. Jesus had to go to Samaria because he needed to meet that woman. He needed her. She needed him. He had to go. Violation number one. Violation number two, he got to the well, and he was tired. He was alone because his disciples had taken off to find food, which also is weird because they're in Samaria, and how would they find food if they weren't going to talk to Samaritans? It was very confusing. So Jesus is sitting at the well by himself, and a Samaritan woman comes along, and he says something to her. Well, there's two violations right there. He talked to a Samaritan, and he talked to a woman, a Samaritan woman. Two violations. Well, now we're up to three. See, you're not supposed to talk to women in public according to the rules of the day, and you're sure not supposed to talk to Samaritans. Well, then we get to violation number four. He's sitting there. And he asks something of her. Actually, he commands something of her. He says to her, give me some water. Don't learn those manners from Jesus right there, okay? He should have said, please, could you please give me some water? Or he should have just kept his mouth shut and left. But he says, give me some water. You're not supposed to ask things of people who you don't like. You're not supposed to talk to them. You're sure not supposed to take things from them or accept things from them. You could even make that violation into two if you want to because he asks something of a Samaritan and he asks something of a Samaritan woman. Now we get to the fun stuff, because it's like when you go to Thanksgiving with your family, there are certain things that you're not supposed to talk about because Uncle Jim might get mad, or because Aunt Susie might decide that, oh, I'm never going to talk to these people again, or somebody might throw their mashed potatoes against the wall and walk out. Things you don't talk about, marriage, or the lack of marriage, or multiple marriages, you don't talk about those things. And you don't talk about religion. Because somebody's going to get mad. All right, well, there's violation six and seven. Jesus is wrapping up the fines at this point. But he had to. He had to go to Samaria. He had to break all of those boundaries, all of those rules, because... Honestly, they're silly. These are silly, illogical, unreasonable, and disrespectful rules. All based on something that doesn't make any sense in the first place. Do you want to know why Samaria was looked upon by the Jews as unclean? Because way back before Jesus was even born, there was a king who decided that he would let the Jews go back to Samaria after he had conquered them. But he said to himself, but I'm going to mix it up. So he took seven different groups of people from seven different nations 
and sent all of them back to Samaria, and now they have a mixed race. They are no longer clean and pure. And so, and, and so the Jews in the southern part of the kingdom, which is now just a mess, looks at Samaria and says, well, we know it's not, well, actually, they didn't say we know it's not your fault because obviously they know it's not their fault. The king did what the king was going to do decades and decades ago. But you are not pure. We don't understand how you worship. You don't look like us. You don't act like us. You don't talk like us. Stay away from us. Jesus needed to go to Samaria. Jesus needed to see the woman at the well because he saw what had happened and said, no, no, this is not how we're going to do this anymore. Let me show you how we're going to do this. We're going to walk right into the middle of Samaria. We're going to talk to people. We're going to share with them the living water. The living water. Well water. You need it for life. You've got to have water. But well water is temporary. You drink that water, you're going to be thirsty again, especially if you talk about it. Huh? That water is still. There is no life to it. It's stale. But the water that Jesus is offering this woman at the well and all of the people of Samaria and even the Jews is needed for eternal life. And it is everlasting. You will not thirst again. It is alive. It is moving. Rushing. Gushing. This is the water from Jesus, the living water. And if it's gushing, it's gushing all over because you can't control gushing water. It's going to go where it wants, just as the Spirit goes where it wants. Just like Jesus told Nicodemus not just a couple of days ago. The Spirit blows where the Spirit wants. Well, the gushing water flows where it wants. And Jesus looks at the woman from Samaria, and he looks at his disciples, and he looks at the Pharisees, and he looks at all of us, and he says, I have the living water. It is for you, and it is gushing out of you. And you cannot control the Holy Spirit. You cannot control who Jesus loves. You cannot, because that spirit, that water, that gushing is love from God, and you don't get to say who gets it and who doesn't, and we don't get to say, I don't want that much because I can't handle it. This is the gift from God. And as it's gushing out of you and all of the things that you do and say and the people you love, the Holy Spirit may just be pushing and gushing you into some places where you don't want to go, to see people you don't want to see, to acknowledge that, hmm, I might have to change my mind about you. That is God's love. That is what living water does for you. That is what the Holy Spirit is working inside of you to do. The woman said to the people, the woman who probably wasn't well liked because otherwise she would have gone to the well in the morning with all of the other women. The woman goes to the people and she says, come and see. This cannot be the Messiah, can it? And it is. And only after two days, with Jesus visiting a group of people, a little town in the middle of Samaria, they say they know and they see this 
is the Savior of the world. Jesus changes everything. I pray that this week you let him, let the living water gush right out of you and let the Holy Spirit change you, transform you, It should give you tingles. I pray that it does. In Jesus' name, Amen. <clears throat> Our song of the day is number 778 in the blue book, O Christ the Same. Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Will you please share a word of peace with each other, however you are comfortable? You may be seated whenever you're ready. And we will receive our offering at this time. If the, if the children who are here would like to share their offering, they're welcome to come up now. And our offertory song is Fill My Cup, Lord, on your insert. Our souls thirst for you, O Lord. 
satisfy our longing with true refreshment rather than fleeting pleasures. Teach us how to offer this life-giving water to others. Renewing God, hear our prayer. Our souls thirst for you, O Lord. Droughts parch one part of the earth while melting oceans and floodwaters drown another. Show us the folly of our greed and short-sightedness and make us part of the solution to heal our struggling planet. Renewing God, hear our prayer. Our souls thirst for you, O Lord. Show us the places where we have been blind to your vision and give us the wisdom and courage to dismantle what divides us from others. Renewing God, hear our prayer. Our souls thirst for you, O Lord, and your life-giving water is exactly what suffering world needs. Pour it, out, pour it out upon us and all those who desire an extra measure of your grace, especially those we name in our hearts today. Renewing God, hear our prayer. Our soul thirsts for you, O Lord. You have revived your tired servants of all generations and sustained them with your bountiful love. Keep us steadfast until that day when we join our brothers and sisters by the crystal river in your eternal city. Renewing God, hear our prayer. We are satisfied just being in your presence, O Lord. Accept our prayer, our prayers and use us to relieve others of their, seer, of their searing burdens for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are gathered here in this place to worship the Father, through the Son who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now as you go from this place, go with the light of Christ. Have the courage to live into God's glory that God may be revealed to the Word in your life and deeds. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have a few announcements that I'd like to share with you. Our high school um, one-act play players made it to state, and they go to Rapid City next week, or yes, this coming week, so um, how exciting. They are doing their, uh, they're performing today for the community at 2 o'clock in the cafeteria at school. So um, please take some time this afternoon before you have your afternoon nap and go watch the play and um, support our kids. We're going to start a book study um, this in February. You know what? February starts on Tuesday. Um, books to, uh, well, so we'll start on Wednesday, this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And the book that we're reading together is called The Round House. Um, there's information about it in the February newsletter. And if you are interested in participating, um, please call me, let me know so, um, so that we can, I can expect people. I would ask that you would purchase your own book through Amazon or whatever books whatever book place you order from, um, and start reading. And it's a really good book. And it's one of those books that you can sit down and just read until you're done, unless you have to get up and have a drink of water or you know, eat. So uh, I highly recommend it, and I really hope that you are um, able to join us. We are having our pre-lit blowout brunch that we've talked about to uh, as a fundraiser to help uh, refill our Good Samaritan Fund. It's on February 27th after worship, and there's lots and lots of good food plans uh, for the meal and uh, door prizes and all sorts of good things. Um, we are still in need of funds to help the cost of food and, and um, you know, all the things that go with making the meal. So if you are able to contribute, please talk to the team right there. Anything else, Jeannie, that I forgot to say? Okay. Um, 
Shirley Lee uh, needed replacement surgery and is recovering in a nursing home in Watertown. I have her phone, uh, her cell phone number and uh, the address of the, of the nursing home if you are interested in sending her a card or giving her a call or maybe even just visiting. Um, but I would ask that you would keep her in your prayers. Um, we know the people in our community who are living with cancer and cancer treatments, I would ask that you would continue to keep them in your prayers as well as your families. Um, this cancer is a struggle. No matter what it is or where it's at or who's got it, it's a struggle. And it changes your life. So please keep people in your prayers. Um, are there any other prayer concerns or joys for the congregation? Yes, my dad has had a stroke this week, but thankfully he is home um, and doing quite well. So I continue to keep him in your prayers that the medication changes and things they're trying to do will help to keep my life smooth sailing. I'm glad he's home. And our prayers are with him and with your mom and with all of you. Any others? Are there any other announcements? That I have not, uh, that I haven't mentioned. Okay. Um, would you please stand as you are able, and we will sing our sending song number seven eighty one in the main book.